You know, we drive down this road every day. This plant all over this fence. This is a plant. And it has some berries on it. And and it's worth at least just, just looking. And this is bittersweet. You can tell hangs on to fruit really late. So you can see that the fruit's still hanging on and it's now the middle of March. And this set fruit probably back in the fall, back in October. And if you mush them open, they're kind of partitioned into these different sections and they each have a seed. Each section has a seed. And this stuff is no good to eat. So there's some bittersweet on this fence, which is a basket material, but you know. So this is a grape. This is a dead, frozen, rotten, last year's grape. And this is what a lot of people would call a Concord grape or some people around here call them frost grapes or fox grapes or river grapes. It's a vitus. So the Latin genus is vitus. This is the nexus of the grape. And we can look up, it's not leaf season right now, so you'd have to look up the grape leaf. But there are ways to identify plants without leaves. For instance, the grape has this really kind of shaggy, hairy look to it, where almost like, it's not all sloughing off, but you can almost see like, there's a little layer, there's like a little peely layer to it. And at every node, there's like a little curlicue. There's like these little curlicues, like peas. You know, like a pea, it wraps. And this is the shaggy bark, look at that. How the bark is kind of shagging off. The bittersweet doesn't do that. So this is bittersweet right behind it. You can see that the bittersweet doesn't have those grasping curly cues like the peas. What the bittersweet does is it has one tendril, one long tendril, and it wraps, it wraps around things. This is bittersweet, the wrapping around, the spiraling around. So how's that different from grapes? Because don't they do the same thing? Right, so the, the difference is in how they're going to cling to a fence. You know, these little these little spindly arms. Mm -hmm. You can see plants like this will sprout and sprout again. This has been cut here, this was cut here, and it, it sprouted again. Here's a brand new, really vigorous sprout coming out. Here are a bunch of sprouts coming out. Here's a nice sprout coming out right here. So um, this could actually be a propagation method to make more of the plant. This is a good strategy. You know, if you really wanted to get into plant identification, so looking at the bud is a great way to identify plants. And if you see these two are different, they have, they're similar but different. And if you look them up, here we are on the side of the road. You know, we did some rambling identification and found out that right here we've got bittersweet, which is a basket material, and we've also got wild grape, which is a, a lovely wild food. And we're going to try to propagate the wild grape and, and we're going to spend some time cutting and removing the bittersweet. You just want to find a live vigorous shoot. So this is last year's growth. The bark is kind of sloughing off. This new shoot right here looks really lively and vigorous and I'm not going to cut it right at the base because I'm hoping that maybe it'll sprout again. So every one of these nodes, every time there's a bud, that's called a node and that's where the, the little grippy curly cues are going to come out and leaves and fruit are going to come out and new shoots are going to come out. Leave a bunch of nodes and for a cutting you want at least two nodes. So you know we're going to put this underwater maybe up to there or bury it in soil up to there and then the rest of it is going to sprout leaves and we'll get a bunch of them. Oh, wow, look at that. Do you see the green? Yeah, yeah. It's alive. It's alive. This is one piece of wild grape by the roadside. And if we cut this into sections, two node sections, you know, so cut this, cut this off right there. Cut it right there. Cut it right there, that's another plant. Cut it right there, three, four plants, right? And so we're gonna root all of these and see, maybe not all of them will root, but maybe maybe some of them will. And then we can plant them around town. And while this patch gets destroyed, 
we can make new patches all over town that will live forever. You know, so this is just some potting soil that we got from the garden store before it got shut down. Um, but if the garden store gets completely shut down, you could just get some dirt from the outside, from the dirt. And you could get a cup, which these are, um, these. I found these in the recycling actually, that somebody had gotten rid of all of these little coffee cups. Uh, but you could use anything. You could You could make any type of cup. You know, you could carve a cup out of wood. Or you could just stick it right in the ground. But when it comes to planting, you need at least two nodes per cutting. One node, which is right there on the bottom, is going to go in the dirt. And the other one sticks up on top, and that's where the new life is going to come from. So we're going to make a bunch of these little cups. So this is what we got. All these coffee cups, thrown away coffee cups. And this is potting soil that could just be dirt soil from the dirt from the earth and you just make sure that one of these nubs is under the dirt and there's life can we get a we can't get this to focus basically anyway we got a lot of grapes here from a dying patch soon to rise again <laughs> 